Hey guys! Oh! Where's the fucking <laughs> okay. There's no dungeon, he's not here! Hello, hello, hello. Greetings, brothers! Welcome to the Blood Angels Commander channel! Hey guys, how's it going? There is no Dante. The Dante was a lie. Um, then I'll look at the made to order this weekend. Uh, I looked at it. It's twenty two fifty for the company, the Primaris Company Champion, which I think is cheaper than people maybe predicted. Uh, I'm maybe gonna order it like. I think I get paid on Thursday, so I might order it on Thursday. I think he's a cool option to have for, um, like, to join a Blade Guard veteran squad. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure I'm gonna. I have a Corbolo, I have a Carlian. I mean, I have a couple of Tycos, a Death Company one and a, and a, and a regular one. So I don't necessarily need any of those. But yeah, I mean, if you haven't got any of them, I did. I did cover all the made-to-order stuff in my video I put out yesterday. Uh, but I think, for me, the company champion seems like the most interesting. I'd be very surprised if they do not give the Primaris company champion rules because um, cause they're selling the model, right? And they're not selling a firstborn company champion. Um, what about other Blood Angel stuff? What, you got a question about someone in particular? Good evening, Michael. Good evening, Nathan. Um, You converted an, uh, an Emperor's Champion to convert into a Blade Guard. The Emperor's Champion is what? The. Th the I was going to say Thousand Sons. No. Um, the Emperor's Champion is the. Black Templar's Champion? Good evening, Robert. How are you doing? Speaking of Black Templars, Robert rocks into the room. He's our like re uh, resident Black Templars player. How are you, Robert? So I'm still working on these Death Company. I have this guy's edge highlighting to tidy up, and then I get two more guys, two more guys with hammers that I want to finish. So based on how slow I am at doing this, it'll be the whole night I will be doing edge highlighting of Death Company. But once this, like after this paint session, uh, these guys will be getting very, very close to um, very close to not needing any more work on them. They need a little bit of work beyond their edge highlighting, but uh, yeah, I'll be done with edge highlight. Or I might not be done with it tonight, but I'll be close, and then we'll get on to something else. Good evening, Campbell. Good evening, Sang. Tezab says, with the major order stuff, does anyone know if the kits come in the blank white packaging, or do they come in the bespoke individual packages and design? I really imagine they would come in that sort of white forge roll packaging. I have never ordered. Have I ordered something that's made to order before? Um, I think the only thing I got before that was made to order was Indomitus, and it was in the genuine Indomitus packaging. What? Uh, surely someone in the chat has done a made to order. What packaging do they come in, guys? Someone, someone who could, someone who tears up with an answer to this question, would you? I would appreciate it. I feel like they would didn't be doing the packaging because the packaging would not like they would have stopped producing those packages a while ago. Does it really matter the packaging? I mean, maybe I guess if you were serious about collecting all the different packaging, it could matter. Uh, good evening, Mike. How are you? Andonius, good evening. Stuka, I recently got a ball predator problem. Is the guy put in the rhino side door? On instead of the sponson, still okay to use. 
Um, I mean, some people want your models to be WYSIWYG. I'm not sure. Could you can you write the question again? I'm not sure. I'm. I think there's maybe like a grammar mistake in there, and I'm not understanding it. Uh, I did make the made order Space Marine, and he came in the white box. Thanks, Andonius. Yeah, I imagine that they would come in the white box. I really don't think they would have kept. I really, I really wasn't expecting them to do the custom packaging or the the original packaging for a model that's been out of print for a long period of time. I mean, technically, Tycho and Seth and all that haven't been out of print for too long. Do you know what? Seth is the other character that interests me, I suppose. Um, but I do kind of feel like we there might be a Primaris Seth. I mean, I think inevitably there will be a Primaris Seth. I just mean like there might be a Primaris Seth sooner rather than later, right? Uh... So what's everyone working on tonight? Is everybody is it... the other night on the on our Three Grots podcast, Mark was like, John! Like called me out. He's like, Are you actually doing stuff to prepare for 10th edition? I was like, Mark, I'm doing loads. Like I have finished the most models that I have finished in like this whole year in the last like uh two months or something. I've got like five model or I was going to say five models. No, I've got like five complete units in the last two months or something. Uh, I mean, because I usually paint models to an uh, incomplete state, because I paint them for competitive play and then they're not competitive, so I leave them in a half finished state. Uh, I mean, I haven't done all of them from scratch, but what it does mean is like I have a lot of models that are like half finished in a reasonable state. Like these Death Company, for example. They had all the base colors on them, maybe, but just maybe not the edge highlighting done. So I can just jump in and do the edge highlighting on them and call them done. And I have, I probably have a bunch of sand guard that are in that same spot where like, uh, they maybe have the less competitive weapon options, but they're there and they're 80% done. So I'm gonna, I'm trying to jump on as many things as I can, and get them finished. To hit two wounds working on Terminators, nice. Um, I think. Chain Fist Terminators are going to be a big winner. I think that anti vehicle ruling that they're getting in uh, 10th edition, I expect. I think we're going to see more Terminators than we maybe. Like, I think we're going to see more Blood Angels Terminators than we've seen in a while just because of that anti vehicle rule. Uh, like, the anti vehicle 3 plus, just wounding vehicles all the time on 3 plus, seems like it's going to be pretty useful. Um, so yeah, Chain Fist Terminators to me feel like they're going to be good. Michael says, um, first time poster but long time watcher. I'm getting a Blood Angels army ready for 10th, working on some infiltrators. Michael, thanks for posting for first time. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the group. Uh, there's a Discord you can get involved in. We've got a Facebook group we can get involved in. Uh, we generally do hobby hangouts like I'd say every... Not every Saturday night, because I do have a life and sometimes I do something on a Saturday night, but I would say most Saturday nights we have a hobby hangout, so the, what you need to do is get your get your Blood Angels ready every Saturday night about this time, usually about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, we get on and we do like a couple hours of hobby, we just hang out, answer questions, talk Blood Angels. Um, it's always nice to see someone new in chat. Uh, I think we're going to see like a bunch of new people with uh, obviously because 10th edition is coming out as well uh, like Michael jumping in on the hobby for 10th edition but it's cool uh, it's always nice to see new viewers and stuff like that as well so uh, welcome welcome Michael how are you I'm excited to actually knock out like some new tactics videos for 10th edition. I've kind of been treading water a little bit least recently because I guess with 9th edition sort of wrapping up, like there's a few people still doing tournaments, um, stuff like that. Marius is in the house. Hello Marius, you've been painting any Ultramarines today? Uh, Marius was very upset because I called the... I called all the other made-to-order stuff inconsequential, and he was like, "But the Ultra Means characters aren't inconsequential." I was like, "That's a bad choice of phrase on my words, man." Um, 
I'm, I guess I'm very biased when it comes to Blood Angels when I talk about stuff in my tactics video. If Blood Angels can't field it, then I'm biased. Uh, I'm sorry I upset you with the... Uh... To be anything though, I'm a little bit jealous of like... I hope Dante gets rules like Marnius Kalgar in... Uh... In 10th edition, because I, I thought Marnius was... Like, considering he was like... I think at the end of the edition there, he was like 15 points cheaper than Dante. I think he's like... Maybe not way better. But I think he, like, he's got, I think he's on, like, eight wounds with half damage. It's like, that kind of dwarfs what Dante's doing. Uh, Dante gets a good number of attacks now, though, thankfully. Uh, I just really wish that they'd given him a sweet profile, like Hellbrick. Maybe you'll get a sweet profile yet. Maybe you'll get that in 10th um, edition. Crispy Delicious, how are you tonight? Uh, Sanga says he's busy unpacking after moving houses. Oh, congratulations, you got a new house? I've been moved into this house now almost like... I moved in October... Uh, almost two years ago now. I think it must have been October 21. I want to put up some more shelves in this room because, like, I don't have a lot of space here. I've got too many, I've got too many board games too many Warhammer models so I need to put up some shelving and I also need to tidy I was actually going to tidy over the Christmas holidays but because I like fell off my skateboard and broke my arm I never actually got a chance to tidy uh, this room so it's I did a little bit of tidying the other day uh, but it's hard man like during the day uh, I get two kids to look after so I don't get a lot of time and then at night time I don't want to be like tidying the room because I'll wake the kids so um yeah, hopefully uh, next time I'm on holiday from work, I'm going to get a bit of tidying done. I'm still waiting for my Dante before anyone asks, like, why I'm not painting Dante. I'm still waiting, uh, which is madness to me, because I was, honestly, I was one of the first pers people to order Dante. Like, I was there, the min I was actually there 10 minutes before the pre-sale went live. I'm normally not organised on Saturday mornings for pre-sale, but because it was Dante, I was, like, there, like, I was there at 10 to 10 to 10 and I was refreshing the website like crazy. The website was dying, like it was crashing, you were getting timeouts. I think I actually got Dante into my basket and went all the way through, put my credit card details in, pressed pay, and then it like timed me out and I had to do that all again. And I actually did it all again quickly because I was like, oh fuck it, if it double charges me, I'll just phone the bank and tell them that I've been double charged. It's only, you know, Dante's only like 10 bucks. Like, it's not going to be the end of the world if they double charge me and i got to wait a few few hours or a few days to get the money back. So I did it like super early and it's like, here we are. Like, I didn't actually realize it was that long ago. It was the 15th of last month. Um, which is a long time. I don't know when I'll get my Dante. Uh, I guess at this point, is fine. I'm going to try and finish off like another unit or two before he turns up. That's the goal. Uh, because I know that the second I'll get him, I'm going to spend like a lot of time getting him painted to a high standard, right? Um, anyone else waiting for Dante? Michael's still waiting. Okay, good. Uh, what's up, Cal? How are you doing? Uh, It's my belief that Dante wasn't meant to be on sale until the 10th. They only let him go because they he was spoiled. Oh, I mean, I guess that's possible. Uh, I've heard of... The thing is with Dante, I've heard some, some people have said like they've been in their local shop and they have six Dantes. Whereas like other places have just said like, no, they they're weren't even allowed to reorder it. Like... Uh, the rumor I heard was that Element Games weren't allowed to order Dante. Like, they just fly out. Like, Games Workshop said, no, you can't order them, you don't have any. Uh, I don't know how much truth there is to that, but, um... That's what I heard. The thing is, there's so many rumors flying around. Not just about, like, ordering... But everything at the moment, like it seems like everything is 
I don't even know where all these rumours come from. The rumour content is out of control at the moment, isn't it? Alright, this guy's edge highlighting is about as good as it's going to get for me. Uh, I cancelled my Dante order and dice. Yeah, I like I just left it. I suppose I could have probably cancelled it and shipped it, shopped elsewhere. I just thought I'd leave it. It's not like like I got a lot in my pile of glory. I'm sure he's going to be here before tenth. I'm not. I'm not playing. I'm actually not playing a tournament until November. I think. Like I think I've signed up to. Yeah, I have signed up to a tournament. I haven't paid for it yet, but I'm. I'm convinced I'm going to a tournament, like, I actually didn't even check the date, it's November, I'm going to a tournament in November, so uh, I don't necessarily need Dante or anything until November. Uh, uh, Dante had a data sheet in the Lion book, that's true as well, Phil. Uh, what's a Blood Angel's favourite fruit? Surely it's Blood Orange. What else could it be, JT Money? Sod off is painting his Dante now. Just trying to make me jealous, are you Sod? Um, you literally think some of the GRPA team would make sure that Blood Angels Commander... I don't know, um, a few people have said that. They're like, see see if... I think when you get those... those um, when Games Workshop send you out those like, whatever they call them, preview copies, then you're like, um, I don't know, you have to sign an NDA, all that kind of good stuff, I think. I don't actually know. I think you have to sign all good stuff, an NDA. Um, so I think for me, because I like talking about anything and I don't necessarily want to be limited in what I talk about, I guess, um, I guess I'm happy enough to just wait and pay for my own models or whatever. Um, I think maybe in the future they'll send me something who knows I know you'll lose sleep over it but I appreciate the support Carl how you doing sup mass perfect uh, I'm just gonna wait man I'm honestly um I have, uh, Brad, I appreciate it Brad, but I think like, um, I actually have a week off three weeks from now, not like I'm counting or anything, like the, the 12th of June or something is my week from work. So I think he'll definitely be here by then, and that would be, that'll be a week where I can paint him and enjoy it anyway and, and not be rushing him. Um, so if he doesn't come for the 12th of, of June, then I'll be sad, but um, I don't think I necessarily need them before then. I mean, if I'm playing a, a Arcs of Omen list, like a serious list that I want to win with, I'm probably going to include Gilliman because I think Gilliman is stronger. Like, I really like Gilliman in Arcs of Omen. Like, he has been... I think I said a, a couple of times on stream that I wish I was going to one more Arcs of Omen tournament with Gilliman because I got to go to two. Um, I'm trying to think I'm not actually sure the tournament that I won I don't think I took Gilliam into but regardless I, I kind of wish that I'd got a chance to take Gilliam into another Arcs of Omen tournament because I um, just thought it was a really like it's just really fun Gilliam just combos really well with Blood Angels and Arcs of Omen I mean, I think that's just the simplest way to, to say it. Like, he combos really well with us. And, um... I've still not used Gilliman in game. Right now he's in the cabinet in Warhammer Aberdeen for Golden Troll. Oh, well, I hope you do well, Marius. I didn't actually realise you were so close to Aberdeen, damn. Uh, do you, are you... Are you... Um, sorry, do you live in Aberdeen or do you live close? 
I wanted to go to one of the tournaments in Aberdeen. Um, like I was looking at like a one day um, RTT for the end of the season or the end of Arts of Omen, but um, yeah, I'm, I just need to give it like six months. I'm in a funny state stage with my kids actually. Like the kids are fine; they're just very, very, very hard work at the moment. So we just need to um, just need to get through the next couple of months. And then I'll then I'll get back into the tournament swing of things. But yeah, you should. No, well, I mean, I guess you're a, you're an Ultramarines player, so it doesn't really matter. I was like, you're not going to be on a clock for using Gilliman. Any Blood Angels player that hasn't used Gilliman in Arts of Omen, I I thoroughly recommend it. He's really fun, and he just combos. Like the plus two to all advance and charge is just kind of insane. And the reroll ones on Ball Predators actually makes Ball Predators like really cool. Like I really like Ball Predators when you can just reroll all the ones on them. All right, so these last two Death Company I have to paint or edge highlight this guy, for example. This guy's part has been part of the Death Watch. Um. So I gave some of the Death Company. This this guy's got part of the Death Watch. He's got the Death Watch shoulder pad. This other guy apparently was part of the Sangre Guard and part of the Death Watch. So this guy was a monster, but now he's fallen to the Black Rage. Um, so that's that, I guess. Uh, Yeah, I knew that they were doing sort of the end of season tournaments and I, I was really tempted. I, I probably could have gone, like I could have said to my wife, I'm going to a one day tournament in Aberdeen and she would have been fine with it. But at the same time, trying to just be respectful and if the kids are being difficult. Like last night, we put Annabella to bed at like 8. I honestly think she was still up at like 11. Like I... Like, about 10 o'clock after I'd gone back upstairs trying to get her to go to sleep like four times, I just said to my wife, like, you need to go now because I'm losing the will to live. <laughs> so yeah, I can get why my wife doesn't want me to go away for too many tournaments at the moment. Um, I've started my boys potty training today. How the hell does any kid learn? Oh, Mike, it, get, like, it gets so much better. Like, uh, Annabella's potty training was a nightmare for like two months. So many friggin so many accidents and now we've gone like probably like a month they probably get it within like a month honestly um what's a good edge highlight to highlight black templars um i would think like i think a lot of people use eshin gray for black templars maybe or like some other pretty dark gray uh robert you're a black templars player what do you use um i I'm using Fenrisian Grey, which is this like sort of much lighter Space Wolf style grey for my Death Company edge highlighting. And um it is good, but I think I think it's much more um I think it's a much more Blood Angel style bluey a blue that contrasts the red, like on these shoulder pads is what I'm talking about. Like that's that's much more like Blood Angels edge highlight style I think maybe maybe I uh, wonder who arrives first John Dante or Primaris Company Champion I looked at ordering the Primaris Company Champion now anyone else done it I looked at it today as well I didn't order it but I think I'm going to order it I just wanted to see what finances I have this month because I assume that this month we're gonna need like what people people have said 150 for the for the 10th edition box but I don't know if that's going to be 150 with the 30 bucks off from like the resellers or if it's going to be 180 and then 30 bucks off like do we do we actually know the price of the 10th edition box set cuz like I guess I want the 10th edition box set I, I feel like I do want another squad of blade guard 
I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll wait to see if blade guard are going to be any good at fighting into armor because armor is going to be a big problem right uh, robert says robert does a lot of uh black templars he says thick edge highlight in incubi darkness and then a thinner highlight with thunder hot blue and then a sharp highlight with rust gray for templars that seems like a lot of work but yeah i mean um I ended up getting the champion. Oh yeah, I was going to say, it was a bit weird that they took the Flesh Terror shoulder pads off sale anyway, right? Because it was almost like just saying, like, you can't get anything Flesh Terrors. Like, the fl like the, the only Flesh Terrors character is gone. The shoulder pads are gone. I always thought it was a little bit weird that they took the Flesh Terror shoulder pads off sale. And, like, I mean, if you're a Flesh Terror player now that they're on made to order, you need to buy a bunch of them, but, um... I thought it was weird that they took them off sale because, like, those shoulder pads work on Primaris Marines. It's not like you need special Primaris Flesh Tear or shoulder pads, right? So I thought it was a bit harsh that they'd taken those off sale. Um, so I guess if you don't have them, now is the time to get a bunch. If they ever put the Blood Angels Terminator shoulder pads back on sale, I would get more of them. Um, I think I would get more of them even if they don't fit the the new Terminators, honestly. Because there's more you can do with them. They might work on some characters, they might work on some other bits and bobs. I know that Terminator shoulder pads work really well on those chunky Blade Guard veteran arms as well. So, um, they will make some King of Rules for them. What King of Rules, sorry. What have I missed? Uh, Jim said, I think they're trying to liquidate successors. Well, I mean, I don't know if they're trying to liquidate successors. If they if they remove the successor detachments, can't they just run one of the new default detachments? Isn't that what they want people doing? Like running these new detachments that are overall more balanced anyway, right? That's kind of what they're wanting. That's why they've made this like gladiators detachment seem to be quite generic slash quite strong. Cause like they'll want a bunch of people um, Robert says think for yourself yeah I mean that's one of the things I guess pick a colour that you think would be good I think there's multiple colours I think Robert mentioned one I mentioned one I suppose it depends on how, how good you are at painting I am not somebody that could edge highlight three layers um, or three different colours together I find it hard enough to just do one colour and be accurate or one yeah I mean like look at this this isn't accurate at all you can see all the mistakes on it and it's just one line so um If you're doing battle ready, I would say pick one color, which is what I do. Uh, any speculations on incursors and infiltrators in 10th edition? I mean, I think they're just going to be the probably, I think incursors and infiltrators are the best troop choice in 9th edition, and I don't foresee that changing in 10th edition like they for sure will have OC2 which is objective control 2 and they will probably get to keep the smoke keyword and smoke has got better so like in terms of like when you pop smoke now you don't just get uh, minus one to hit you also get the benefit of cover so smoke has got better so arguably incursors and infiltrators will have got better and i already thought they were the like sort of pretty much the best troop units right uh where's the company champion being sold he's the primaris champion company champion mass and he's been sold right on the front page of games workshop's website on made to order uh, he kind of looks like a blade guard in a way uh basically like a He's kind of, I guess he's kind of the size of a blade guard veteran, but he doesn't have a shield. But maybe, like, if you wanted to use him as a blade guard lieutenant or even as a blade guard, you could probably just magnetize storm shield onto him somehow, I imagine. And then you've got yourself, like, the best of both worlds, I think. That's probably what I would do if I'm doing him. Uh, oh, you're messaging the guy directly. Okay, Robert, sorry, my mistake. 
Uh, where do I get the new Dante model? It's sold out everywhere. Yeah, welcome to the club, Bear. I pre-ordered them on the 15th of last month. Um, some people in chat probably can re uh, direct you to stores that have the new Dante model because a few people have said that like their store has a few of them and a few people have said that they know where they, there's some of them in stock right now. Um, I think a lot of the online retailers have struggled to have Dante in stock or just to have Dante in general. eBay has a bunch of Dantes and they're not too overcosted, which is crazy because that new Kill Team box today that went on sale for um, the new Kill Team box that went on sale for 100 bucks was on eBay like an hour after it went on, not even an hour, it was on it was on eBay at like 20 past 10 for 500 bucks. So five times the retail price. Um, these the, the amount of scalping now is kind of getting sickening, honestly. Like, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, I know Games Workshop said it wasn't a problem, but it's obviously, I have a family and I have kids and sometimes we got to do shit on Saturday morning. I can't always be at the computer for an hour. Like, because you basically need to be there from like 10 to 10 to maybe like 20 past 10 based on like how busy their website is. I can't, I can't do that. I can't, I can't commit to that every Saturday morning and the pre-orders are ever, like the pre-orders are pretty often, right? So the scalping is getting ridiculous. Johnny says nerds. Yeah, we are nerds, Johnny. Um, so, I mean, cool. I feel insulted. Uh, if we're nerds, <laughs> uh, Brad brought a box of infiltrators. What should you do? You should make five of both, Brad. Um, they're both good. They'll both be made. I I expect I expect you'll probably want to be able to run both. I expect you'll probably actually want to buy another box at some point in uh, at some point throughout like tenth edition. Um, James Workshop said there would be less rerolls for Immortals in the new editions. They're liars, uh, says Mouse. Yeah, it seems like there's still going to be plenty of rerolls and there's still going to be plenty of Mortal Wounds. I'm not sure why they said that, um, because it doesn't, like, what we're seeing doesn't necessarily reflect what they said. Um, I think I think whoever was in their marketing department that was trying to say that was trying to ad lib on something and it just doesn't quite come across correctly. Uh, how am I going to paint my Dante? I'm going to spray him black, then I'm going to hit him with ret then I'm going to spray him retributor armor, and then I'm probably just going to paint him the same as I paint all my um, Sangri Guard. So you see all these people on YouTube or not YouTube, sorry. Uh, all these people on like Facebook and Instagram that have posted up these lovely looking Dantes. Mine will be a very average looking Dante because everything I paint is probably very average. And um, I'll make a video on how to make a very average Dante. Because I, I, I really did want to make a video on Dante. I know that like basically now it's pointless because it's so far after the release date. But like, the stubborn part of me goes, well, I don't care, I missed the release date now. I'm just gonna make the video I wanted to make anyway. It's my channel, if I wanna make the video, I'll make it, right? Um, you guys always support me, so I'm sure a bunch of you will watch my video even though it's late. Uh, and it's probably not, it's probably like a battle ready guide. A bunch of you guys will watch it. Uh, I'll get some nice comments. So I'll do it even though it's super late. There's nothing, the the pre-order the pre-order nonsense at the moment. There's no point even talking about it. It's just fr it's just frustrating everybody. It's like everything that every weekend now, stuff that people want on pre-order is getting sold out super fast, or it's not getting sold out. They're getting to order it and then it's not coming for ages. And then another side of the coin is um, the you know. The other side of the coin is that it's on eBay for five times the price. So there's, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it, I guess. 
we can get frustrated about it or we can just try and not let it bother us. Uh, the, the best thing, the thing that I'm doing is every time something comes up like that where there's a, there's a copy of like Kill Team, like there was one this morning that was on, that was on um, eBay like 20 past 10 for 500 bucks. Every time I see somebody mention that, I just retweet it. That's the only thing I think we can do is just like get visibility on it. So not like, I'm not like adding anything to the drama or anything. I'm just retweeting it so that like people, hopefully Games Workshop will see like, yes, people are getting really frustrated by this. There's far too much reselling going on. There's got to be a better way of getting this into genuine customer's hands. Because that's the thing that annoys me with Dante, is like, I am a genuine customer. I couldn't be more genuine customer. I play one army. Like, literally play one army. And collecting those units for my army is obviously really important to me, and I want to be there, and I want to have them at the right time or on the release date. And I made a big effort on that morning to be ready on the website. You know, like we were going out that morning that Dante was on pre-order and basically I'd tell my wife, like, I just, you just need to wait. We can't go out until I get this thing pre-ordered. So I got my whole family just waiting for me to get this model pre-ordered. Then guess what? It doesn't even matter because it doesn't come any, it doesn't come in any sort of timely manner. So yeah, tweet. If you see someone talking about the scalpers or you see something on eBay that's disgusting, I guess like share it, tweet it. I think it's all we can do. Um, Antonio says his Dante will be done, but you'll watch me paint one for sure. I appreciate that, dude. Did anyone here enter the Black Library competition? I've thought about entering it before, but I've not entered it yet. Uh, good evening, John. How are you? Uh, reavers may actually be decent if they don't change their gun massively. I think they need to just give Reavers uh, knives, like some serious killing power. Like, well, with the reduction of AP across the board, they, they actually probably just need to give Reavers knives one AP, right? That might be enough. It's kind of hard to say. But um, I know before with their zero AP, it genuinely felt pretty bad slash use. They, they felt they felt kind of bad. They were also, I don't know if I go as far to say they were useless, but they did, they, yeah, I mean, I think they were useless. Nobody, nobody ran them in competitive play period. They even made like a special version of the Reavers for Space Wolves. I forget what they're called. They were called like some sort of hunters or something. Um, and no one ran those either, so like, um, they just weren't good. You entered a Lamenter story? Good for you. Good evening, Mark. How are you doing? Uh, Games Workshop are trying to get people to pre-order from there directly so they make more money. Is Dante in stock on Games Workshop right now? Like, the actual official site, Mark? Because... I hear you, like, I get that they probably do want people to order it from them more often, but, like, I'm, like, 90% sure after my Dante hadn't come for, like, a few days, I went onto the official site just out of, like, curiosity and was, like, he's not, he's not in stock on the official site either. So, at that point, does that make your argument mute? I'm, I mean, I'm not... Anyway, how are you, Mark? You good? Are you doing any hobby? Because you were busting my ass on the podcast the other night. Look, this is another... Another Thunderhammer Death Company guy. Uh, I'm going to try and get two guys edge highlighted tonight, which will actually finish out the squad. I don't know if I'm going to, because I've made a right mess of this guy's feet, and I'm going to have to spend like 20 minutes going back and cleaning it up with... Uh, with black paint, but we'll see. Dante is still out of stock 
on the USGW site? Uh, no, but GW filled their day one pre-orders and short indexes. All right, okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, I guess I could have ordered it from Games Workshop. The problem for me ordering it from Games Workshop is like they charge a fo they charge post they charge more postage, I guess, and they it is more expensive. So I guess I could just suck it up and pay the more money. I'm a sucker for a deal, though. Like I always buy things that are on sale. Like ev like every year. Like, come now, right, for example, like, what is now? It's like the middle of May. If I want something, like, tech-related, I just won't buy it from this point to till Black Friday, right? Because I know when, like, Black Friday, I will get, like, 30 to 50% off any tech-related stuff. So, like, if I wanted a new phone, if I wanted a new uh, mouse, keyboard, new piece from a computer, even like PlayStation games, anything. Like I'd just be like, right, Black Friday's coming soon, uh, I'll just save it and then I'll basically be able to almost buy twice as many things in Black Friday. So yeah, I'm a sucker for a deal, man. Huge sucker. I probably get caught in Black Friday by like some of the some of the websites will probably put the, like they probably put their prices up 20% just before Black Friday so on Black Friday they can say it's a 20% discount. I'll probably buy something like that just because I'm like, "Oh, look at this, it's 20% off." Uh. There'll be sales in August for back to school. Well, exactly. And, and Amazon has so many sales now, man. It feels like um they have Amazon Day sales and they have, I don't know, Amazon has a lot of sales throughout the year now. If you ever wanted like an Amazon, uh, what are those things called, Echo, like you can just, you can almost guarantee you can get an Echo on sale, like you would never have to pay full price for an, e an Echo. Black Friday is a scam. There was an article in two years ago that uh, seven of ten Black Friday deals were actually worse than the retail price before. Yeah, some of the websites in the UK now, I mean, now they'll actually say like what their price was before Black Friday, so you know it's not a scam. But I mean, you can also watch stuff, right? You could you could watch a specific item to see if it goes up or down. Um, But yeah, I know I'm I'm a huge sucker for a deal. I actually heard from someone that told me like if you're ever gonna buy anything big now, you should actually just put it in the basket of the website you're on and then just leave it there for a few days. And like a bunch of websites will actually like email you a few days later and be like, hey, you know, we saw this was in your basket, do you want 10% off or do you want some like some sort of discount code and then you're like, yeah, I mean, I was going to buy it anyway, right? Um, Land Raiders. Uh, I don't think Suppression Fire will still be a stratagem. In, in fact, we know, oh shit, we kind of know there's no Fight Last anymore. Like, Fight Last is just gone, it's not a mechanic. Uh, if you watch the stream that we did the other night, there's fight first and there's fight normal. There is no fight last anymore. So I would be super surprised if suppression fire is a thing um, and or uh, if suppression fire is a thing and or the like, I don't think there'll be any reason to run a whirlwind in 10th edition. Maybe, like I'm clutching, maybe his indirect fire might be okay, but I think if you're going to want indirect fire, you're probably going to be better off doing Desolation Marines or something. Uh, it's possible it could remove fight first from a unit. I mean, it could mark, I suppose. Um, but you got to remember as well, Suppression Fire was a generic Space Marine strat. It wasn't even a Blood Angel strat. So if they only give Blood Angels six strats, is it six they said they're going to give them? I highly doubt it's going to be for a whirlwind. 
I'd be very surprised. Uh, I mean, it's just just my personal. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've run the whirlwind like literally. It's been in ninety five percent of my games throughout uh, throughout the ninth edition. Um, it's been MVP in a lot of games as well. Uh, I just don't foresee it being. I don't foresee it being needed, or I don't foresee it being a thing. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. Here's the million, million dollar question. Is Mephisto going to get to still fight first though, right? I wonder if they're going to bake that into his profile. So if they bake fight first into Mephisto's profile, uh, that's going to be pretty cool. It's going to be in the Whirlwind data sheet. Yeah, I mean, potentially it's just a thing on the Whirlwind data sheet then. That, I mean, that would be one way that they could guarantee that everybody would still run a Whirlwind, right? Just put an ability on its data sheet that, like, if it, if it shoots all its missiles at, like, a single target or something and it makes a hit, then that target loses fight first if they charge. I mean, I'll definitely feel a little bit sad if I'm not running a Whirlwind just because I've run it so much. But I am. Um, I hadn't expected to see Suppression Fire uh, remain in its like current incantation or uh, incantation. In is that the right word? No, I think in. I don't know what word I'm looking for. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, in yeah, I know. I'm. I don't know what word. It's too late. It's it's. It's um, 20 to 11 on Saturday night. I actually put some beer in the fridge. Incant in incarnation? Incarnation, yes. Uh, thank you. I put some beer in the fridge earlier. I mean, painting all this edge, highlighting maybe a beer would actually help me. I might get one, we'll see. I think on the day that 10th edition comes out, I'm going to hopefully have like a whole day of games. And maybe by like the second or... Once we've learned the rules, we'll play like a couple of games where we're learning the rules. Once we've learned the rules, then I'll have to do like a game where it's like... Uh, beers or shots or something throughout the game to just really spice it up. Uh, <laughs> I've had some beers, that's why I'm not painting Dante. I mean, I guess that's fair enough. Uh, I'm not the... I, I don't drink very often. It's like when I drink... I either have, like... Two speeds. I either don't drink anything or I drink all the beers. There's not usually an in between for me. I've eaten a lot of shit today, so I don't know if I need the calories. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I was going to say, a, a bigger dilemma for me beyond the whirlwind right now is like Death Company with hammers, which is funny because that's literally what I'm painting. I'm like, are Death Hump Company with hammers actually going to be any good? Because um, like, they basically, you know, they're potentially not going to be that deadly into armor anymore which is one of their main things, and they're also going to potentially not be that good because they're not 3 damage anymore. So it's like... Probably they won't be that good. That's, you know, that's, that's sort of karma telling me, like, you just finally painted them? Well, they're not going to be that good. Yeah, I've had these guys half-painted for ages, so... I just wanted to finish them. It felt bad that they hadn't, they hadn't been finished.
Uh, Benno said he did a bit of maths on Thunderhammers. They're close to Chain Fist. Just because the mortals? Uh, toughest 12 Ironclad anyway, anybody? Do you know what? A Redemptor's gonna be toughness 10, isn't it? So yeah, I mean, I guess the Ironclad's gonna be toughness 11 or 12. I've got, uh, I've got a pretty complete Ironclad I actually need to finish. Maybe, like, after these five Death Company, I was gonna probably do my Laser Destroyer. Then maybe I should do the Ironclad, because that's half finished, but... I've got I've got the, the couple of ball predators, I've got a couple of land raiders, I've got so much to paint. Like there's so much I want to get done for 10th edition. Um, I was gonna say if anyone's got any final 9th edition lists, like for the Army List show, like if you if you have a list that you want to re get reviewed on the Army List show, do me a favor and submit it this week, because like potentially um Probably like in the next couple of weeks, I'm just gonna kill the army list show until we uh, until we go to um, tenth edition. Because there's like there's only like one or two lists coming in every week. Um, I think it's it's not irrelevant, but like I think at this point everybody knows what a good Blood Angels ninth edition list looks like. I'm happy to look at the last couple of lists if anyone's got stuff to submit it, and, and then and then we're just gonna. I mean, I'll probably still stream on the Sunday night, but I'll probably just stream some painting because I've got shitloads that want to get painted for 10th edition, right? Um, what's going to be the meta for Death Company swords? It's going to be... Until we actually know how good they are... Death Company and that are going to be at fighting armor. I don't know if anyone can tell what the meta is going to be. I mean, we don't know what our Blood Angels chapter tactic or detachment bonus is, and I think that's possibly going to determine a lot. Uh, as soon as we know all that stuff, I mean, I'll make a video and we'll figure out what the meta is, but... Um, I'm not sure we have enough information right now. And what Land Raider makes the most sense? The more I think about it, or the more that the releases showed this last week, I think it's possibly going to be the Proteus that makes the most sense because the Proteus has a potential invulnerable save. And uh, you might think like, well, Land Raiders are toughness 12. They're not gonna need that invulnerable save. Well, I mean, they just showed rail cannons are strength 24, was it? So rail cannons are gonna wound a uh, Land Raider on twos? Well, that's pretty fucking scary because they're minus six and they're 12 damage. So, I mean, if you're happy to just instantly take 12 wounds off your Land Raider without getting to roll a save, then then cool if you're not happy doing that which i feel like i wouldn't be it might be the proteus that's the best land raider uh the redeemer might be cool because um flamers auto hitting with the new overwatch rules might be cool but um the proteus doesn't have an assault ramp well i guess maybe then that's not cool then then it may then then i don't then I don't friggin' know, but what I do know is that if you are gonna run Land Raiders, then that sort of like rail cannon profile is just scary as all hell, right? Like a lot, like a not too many Tau people ran that rail cannon in ninth, and it wasn't too much of a problem in ninth. But then the meta wasn't like quite so heavily skewed on like hey a lot of people are built a lot of people are bringing like big nasty vehicles whereas like it's, it feels like in 10th edition like as a tau player you can probably be like yeah well roll cannon's gonna be pretty good because like a lot of people are bringing big nasty vehicles right so um yeah that's that's got me a little bit worried
completely off topic, sometimes we talk about TV shows, right, on a Saturday or night on here. Um, if, if you guys haven't watched the new show by the, the Russo brothers, they're the guys that did um, the two Avengers movies, like Endgame and Infinity War, you should check it out. It's on, um, it's on Amazon Prime and it's called Citadel. There's probably like three or four episodes out of it by now and uh, it seems really good. Uh, your land raider can get covered behind a lamp. Yes, but even behind a lamp, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, you're not going to get save at minus six, which is the base AP of a railgun. It's funny because they, they said, we're making things a lot less lethal. By the way, because they did say that, we're making things a lot less lethal. By the way, we have a railgun that's strength 24 minus six, tw flat 12 damage. Flat 12. That doesn't feel less lethal. That feels crazy lethal. I mean, as a Tau player, I'd probably just try and run three of those every list. Because, I mean, it feels like a lot of people will be bringing armor, right? Uh, how do you get so many Infernal Pistols? Asks uh, Fighter CM. Uh, I mean, over the years, probably most Blood Angels players have bought a lot of, of kits and for a long time Infernal Pistols pro probably not very very effectively costed so a lot of people had like a lot of Infernal Pistols on sprues, at least I did, probably had like 10 or 20 of them on sprues. So um, yeah, uh, how you get a lot of them is you collect the hobby for a long time and have a lot of kits that you didn't make with Infernal Pistols, I guess. Um, beyond that, you probably need to check eBay or... Uh, the new Harpoon looks pretty tasty. Uh, what was the damage on that Harpoon? They put it up as well, right? It was strength 24 minus 5, I think. So your Land Raider, potentially with cover, could get a save of a 6. Still seems pretty bad, doesn't it? Like... You don't want to be trying to save on a 6 for like flat 12 damage. Even save on a 5 from the Proteus feels pretty bad for like flat 12. Uh, AP6, but I believe it's 4 to wound and it deals... Oh, no, 4 plus to wound it deals 12 mortals because... Oh, yeah, because it's... What is it? Devastating wounds and, like, anti-vehicle or something? Yeah. Cool, 12 mortal wounds. That'll be nice. Man. I don't know why they said it was going to be less lethal. There's a lot of things that seem, like, extremely fucking lethal. I mean, like, some things got their AP tuned down a little bit, sure. But it seems like some things are still, like, pretty crazy. I think the craziest thing at the moment, though, that I've seen is just Tank Shock. Like, as a Marine player, I feel like Dreadnought's just got hell of a lot more viable with that Tank Shock. Or at least, like, a melee Dreadnought got hell of a lot more viable. So, like, for Blood Angels, it's the best of both worlds. It's like, for Blood Angels, your melee Dreadnoughts are just so much better than they potentially they were before. Um, they have, like, really crazy damage potential into... I guess into both infantry. Like, they've, like... A Dreadnought with a fist has better damage potential into, like, infantry targets than it had before, and it probably still has really good damage potential into, um, armor because it's probably got really high toughness. Uh, sorry, not really high toughness, really high strength, right? Like, it'll still have, like, like a Redemptor, for example, is strength 14. So, it'll be really good in, yeah, like, a Redemptor will eat up a Land Raider, Plus, it's got a good chance of doing six mortals when you charge. Uh, 
Um, have we seen the profile of like a siege drill or anything like that yet? I don't know if we have seen the pro like a Leviathan siege drill or a, I guess like an ironclad siege drill. I don't think we've seen that. Um, I assume they'll have like anti armor on them as well. What are they at the moment? Like 2d3? Potentially they could move to like flat damage, like maybe flat, flat four or something. Um, yeah, I mean they'll be good until the railgun rocks up. Yeah, railguns are going to be really interesting. Uh, storm surges as well look really interesting. I mean the Tau preview, I guess. Kind of makes Tau look a little bit scary, doesn't it? Or at least it look, made them look a little bit scary, in my opinion. Um, if you're going to have to take a couple of armor pieces to deal with some enemy armor and the Tau get to go first, they could possibly kill your armor with a couple of well-placed shots. And then it's going to be a very uphill battle. I suppose you could reserve your armor. That's probably the best thing you could do against Tau. You know, like strategic reserves are essentially free now I think like they, they're not gonna cost CP because you don't have any to spend anyway so um yeah maybe there's that to maybe that's the saving grace It's flat six against vehicles at the moment. Oh yeah, so if it might. So it's probably still going to stay flat six against vehicles. So yeah, maybe putting a Leviathan Dreadnought into reserve with a fist. I mean, that was a kind of a risky. I mean, it's still kind of risky, I guess, because you're needing to make like a long charge. Maybe maybe Blood Angels have will have a way to get slight like. We used to have a way to make our charges a little bit more reliable, like our deep strike charges. Maybe that'll come back. I kind of hope that that comes back, because it looks like Sisters of Battle have a way to do it. Eldar have a way to do it. So I kind of hope Blood Angels have a way to just make a, a reserve charge a little bit more reliable. I mean, we're, we're all about charging us Blood Angels, right? It would make sense to have a little bit of a bonus there. With the tank shot dread, they may not even need a sweep attack. That's true. They might not even need the sweep attack, but I mean, it just means that like, I think in some ways it means that like a Redemptor Dreadnought is way better than it was before. Um, I mean, the Brutalis is probably still pretty good, but I think it's a buff to Redemptor Dreadnoughts for sure. I think the Redemptor is possibly the big winner there. Hi Falls, good evening. Uh, Night's range attacks being crazy good. Yeah, I mean the thing is we can we probably still can include knights though, right? Do you think we'll be able to include knights? I was actually wondering if hey BA Chaplin, how are you doing? I was actually wondering if we'll if we'll lose you know like before like if all the rules for the knights are essentially on their data sheets, then we might lose even less. Like if you want to take an armager or a group of armagers, I suppose, or like a a larger knight to benefit your blood angels you might lose even less than you lose an arcs of omen like it might be even more viable like it was already viable to run like a, a small knight like a like the auxiliary detachment or whatever it's called like that might be totally viable Uh, they don't even need to come in from reserves. World Eaters have a 3d6 charge as well. They did a ninth. Do we? We don't know if they've got it in tenth yet, right? I mean, World Eaters have like a crazy alpha strike in ninth with Lord Avocado as well. Like absolutely crazy. They're like they're like Forlorn Furying like two units, ten inches, and then they can. Then they can move 10 and then they can charge. The the Exalted 8 Bound are just crazy. Uh, I played against them a couple of times. 
and um, I felt like it really wasn't pretty. Uh, Storm Raven can't carry anything at the moment over nine wounds. Do you think it'll be able to carry Primaris Dreadnoughts? If it can, that'll be really interesting, Marius. I mean, I think the way that I look at it now is like, like, uh, almost have to look at, at like a commercial point like from a commercial point of view like our games workshop trying to make and sell new space marine flyers i think the answer is no right um because i don't know if they feel space marines need new flyers um and also i think they've struggled to balance flyers so they're probably not making new flyers so then I guess the only question is like, do they want to sell the existing flyers? So like the Storm Raven is a good example of that. Like, do they want to sell Storm Ravens? Well they made Storm Ravens a hell of a lot more attractive in Arts of Omen with the new like aircraft strategic reserve rules. I think Mark actually built a list with two Storm Ravens in it, and when we looked at the list, we're like, wow, this actually looks like a really fun I don't know if it was highly competitive but it certainly looked like it would be a lot of fun to play like semi-competitive double storm raven list we were like yeah this looks hella fun um, so if we can agree that games workshop aren't making new space marine flyers then i guess the question is like do they want to sell more of the existing ones well they probably do so would it make sense for them to basically say at some point in the future, maybe not right now, but at some point in the future, can those flyers transport the Primaris Dreadnoughts? Well, probably would make sense. Um, so, I feel like maybe, maybe we would see, I don't know if we'll see it in the indexes, I don't know if we'll see it at the launch, but it could maybe make sense that um, at some point Primaris Dreadnoughts can be transported. Because if they don't do that, then it'll just be, I think Contemptors are probably your best bet to be transported then. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure the, the, the article that said like Relic Contemptors are getting sort of like they're not getting discontinued, but they're they're made to yeah no the the the, the relic contemptors are I'm confused by what's happening to relic contemptors actually like because there's like new plastic contemptors with various weapon options, but I don't know if that's all the weapon options. Um. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused what's happening to Relic Contemptors, like, what are we actually going to see with them? What's your thoughts on running the Spartan? Well, I mean, the Spartan doesn't have an invulnerable save, right? So I think it's a cool idea, I think it'll be fun. But then if the enemy's got two or three railguns, then that's going to be just a lot of points you potentially instantly lose. Uh, and you don't get to roll a save. I think it generally feels very bad. Like, if you're playing the game and you have a really expensive model, a good example, I suppose, is like, I went to a lot of events in 9th edition where I had Redemptor Dreadnoughts. And the amount of times I went to events with a Redemptor Dreadnought and the Redemptor would get killed and I wouldn't even get to roll a save. I think um, what springs to mind is like, I think the Drukari Dark Lances. I think they're they were like strength ten minus four. It was like I'm just getting blow I'm just getting light lit up by like Trueborn, which like hit on twos. I guess they wound on threes and then I don't get to make a save on my like three hundred oh, I'm exaggerating this. It was like 185 points for a It felt like three hundred at the time. 
um, but like I don't even get to roll a saving throw and that genuinely feels really bad like from a gameplay perspective when you're, you're losing like giant pieces of armor you're just not even getting to roll a save so if you have a Spartan I suppose like maybe if it's toughness 14 or something and it's really difficult to wound it might be more viable but I'd also be pretty concerned if you're running something that's like four or five hundred points and it's like oh against a certain army you're not even gonna get to roll a save and like here's the thing when you can't roll a save you can't manipulate anything um, so this is why like if you ever watch Vanguard Tactics um, Steven on there who plays a lot of or he played a lot of Blood Angels and he always used to like swords and the reason that you like the swords over the axes people might say like you know like people might have said for a while like oh axes are better like there was always this debate where like swords and axes are which one's better right like that debate will go on forever i guess that debate will be reopened as we go into the new edition when people talk about like what's better sangry guard swords or axes or even power fists now um but the reason Steven really liked the swords over the axes, even if sometimes it was worse to wound on the swords, or it was, you know, like the axes would wound on twos, the swords would wound on threes. From my understanding, the reason he liked that is because the swords are minus four. And when you hit things at minus four, most units, most enemies, I guess anything without an invulnerable save on minus four does not get to roll a save. So the enemy can't, like, you know, even if they have a bunch of CP or if they had a way to reroll saves, it's inconsequential because they can't manipulate anything. Because, you know, if you can't save, you can't pay a CP to reroll a save because you can't save. So, if you're going to run like a Spartan, you're going to run into an army where it's like, oh, against this one army, you can't save. You can't manipulate anything, basically, and it's going to be so many points to lose. Um. They're getting rid of the relic, the resin relic contemptor kit. That's all. They still sell venerable contemptors or whatever the vanilla one. I know the vanilla one will be usable, but like, what weapon options will the, what weapon options will we get for the relic? Like, if the contemptor, do you think we're, are we going to get a data sheet for a relic contemptor? That's question one. And if we do get a data sheet for the relic contemptor, what weapon options are we getting? That's question two. If we're just getting a data sheet for like the regular contemptor, not the relic one, I would assume we'd be getting a. Uh, I would assume we would just be like the standard contemptor just has a melee weapon, a multi melter, or an assault cannon. That's it. There's no other options there, right? What's happening to chicken dreadnoughts? The the very vanilla one is being discontinued. But like Death Company dreadnoughts, Furioso dreadnoughts, Librarian dreadnoughts, they are not discontinued. Um, didn't they say a six plus always succeeds now? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean for wounds and hits, a six plus will always succeed, but I don't think they did that for armor. Um, they probably should actually though because like I said it's it's generally a very bad experience on the tabletop if you have a big expensive model and the enemy hits you and they go haha you can't save and you just stood there like fuck it's like the worst it's, it's honestly like the worst feeling in the game like it just I don't I, I kind of think you're right it should kind of be if, if, it, if it was me doing the rules, I would just have it that like a six will always pass because it's like a critical save. It's like the bolt or shot hit the guy on his belt buckle and by a miracle it didn't kill him, right? Or maybe I was going to say maybe that's difficult to balance when you're fighting Gretchen or something. But like if you're on a vehicle that costs like 300 points. Or in that case with the Spartan, probably like 450 points, and they just say to you, oh no, you don't get to save at all. Like, hey, hold on a minute, there's a giant vehicle with giant armor panels. You're telling me there isn't a single time that it saves. You know, it's a bit, um, it's a bit far-fetched, isn't it?
Um, if says we're on a D12, I'd be okay with an actual 12 always saving. Uh, one in six feels too common. Yeah, I mean, probably some. You get what I'm saying, though, Mark. It's like it's just, it's a bad like. Maybe they should just make it like any time there's like a 200 point unit, like pick every every single piece of armor or every single unit that costs over 200 points and just say, yeah, everything that's costs over 200 points for a single unit or model, they have a six up in fun because they're heavily armored and sometimes they get lucky. Maybe not so much for like infantry. I just think it's really bad to have spent 200 plus points on a model to be shot, potentially turn one, and then just got told, oh yeah, the AP's too high, you don't get a save against that. So you just lift off your brand new model without ever getting to roll a dice. Um, you can go to ground now on infantry. Oh, that's very true. So infantry can go to ground and get a six up. Uh, one CP go to ground, they get, what is it? They get benefit of cover and they get a six up in fun. So yeah, they just, they just need something like that for vehicles that just, means that you don't get in a situation where you feel terrible because it does it does feel terrible um and i i think anything that makes you just sort of stand there and feel helpless in the game is not good uh like i don't mind like i don't mind you telling me like hey i've hit you with really high ep you gotta save on a six what i dislike is like hey that 200 point dreadnought that you've got you just have to lift it off. You don't get to roll any dice. I'm like, hmm, that's not a good feeling. And in arguably, in some like for the railgun, there'll be no there'll be no strat you can use on that dreadnought that will give you that will even let you go uh, roll the dice. Right? Spartans might have higher toughness. Yeah, Spartans are super heavies. Yes, uh, Falchions are super heavies. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just telling you my experience of ninth edition. We'll have to see what they say in 10th edition. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. That's why Iron Hands are so damn meta. I mean, I guess they got 6 up, feel no pain on everything. Uh, it's a pretty cool... I actually saw some one of the guys that was a channel member saying that he just started running all his Blood Angels... Like, he just started running Vanguard Vets as Iron Hands. Um... <laughs> Just because he was like, they're so the sick up feel no pain just helps so damn much, and I can still run all the stuff that basically I ran as blood angels, but I can also have the survivability of iron hands and fire support to back them up. And I was like, Ugh. iron hands are good. Uh, iron hands probably always will be good. It'll be interesting to see if their detachment, like what what form of detachment that they have in in tenth edition, I guess. That's why I prefer t taking the Relic Dreadnought. Yeah, I mean, that's why I, as much as I have three Redemptors, quite often the Relic Contemptor is a better choice because it has a five up in Van and it also has um, no profiling. Uh, but I guess profiling has changed now. So like Redemptors will, like genuinely, I guess armor will be better because of the profiling changes, which I like. Uh, I think I like the profiling changes a lot. It never made sense to me that like, like the movement of certain units could get so restrictive. Like I think if a Leviathan Dreadnought gets profiled, it moves like three inches at the moment. Whereas like now it'll just move its full eight regardless of what profile it's on. So I think it'll make like some of those, um, it'll make some of those options just infinitely better, right? Like a, a rhino with one wound in the current rules moves three inches. A rhino with one wound in the tenth edition rules still moves its full twelve. Uh, a one wound impulsor is going to be interesting, right? A one wound impulsor, like with OC, with an OC value, just still zooming, potentially like with an advanced roll, like twenty inches. Um, Something that can transport 25 be a, maybe a bit of an issue. I think it'll be cool. Like, I have never seen a Spartan on the board in 10th edition. So if... Sorry, 9th edition. So I'm I'm excited to see new... New units on the table. And I'm also excited to see, like... Potentially more varied lists. Like, there should be, there should be more lists that can do well. 
I feel like. Soon enough, the floodgates of remaining rules and data sheets will appear. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's we're only a few weeks away. Uh, if was, um, I think it's going to be, I think everything will be out by like, probably about a month from now, actually. That'll be cool. I'm excited. I want to see the new rules. I I have like I I obviously have a few bugbears from this edition, uh, so I'm I'm going to be pleased to see the back of them, uh, and I also think it's great that Blood Angels aren't getting their codex at the start of the edition, because um, I think based on my experience of like an early codex last edition. It was not a good experience, so uh, I'm I'm excited to see like even the codex that came out like six months after the edition started just felt like they had more than more of a handle on what that edition actually looked like. So um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm not exactly sure when our codex will come out, right? What do you make of suppressors? One of my favourite units in ninth, but um, I never do well with them. I don't think anyone does well with them, Marius. I think the problem with suppressors in ninth was they're supposed to be a mobile unit, right? But then the second you moved them, you took minus one to hit. Um, we talked about this the other night on the podcast, saying that, like it was much better now that um, heavy is plus one to hit if you remain stationary, but no penalty if you move. So. In a way, yeah, I mean, suppressors are potentially a sleeper unit, right? Where, like, everybody's... No one's thinking about suppressors because everybody thought they were trash, or arguably they were trash in, in ninth edition. But now, if they can stay still and get plus one to hit, and it's nine auto cannon shots hitting on twos, well, actually, sounds pretty nice. They're, they're like... I forget suppressors. I can't remember if they're 36 or 48 inches. But they are strength seven auto cannons, and I think auto cannons have maybe kept minus one from what we've seen. So yeah, I actually own six suppressors. Don't you dare make me put more things on my painting list, Marius. Now, now I want to finish the suppressors that I've gone, and I've fucking painted mine. Blood Angels, is, uh, sorry, not. Uh, I've painted mine this same damn edge highlighted Death Company scheme. God damn it. Yeah, okay, suppressors might be good. Yeah, because the changes to heavy weapons mean they might actually be quite good. And if we think that their Overwatch is just going to be... Their, their removal of Overwatch is just going to be built into their data sheet. Uh, it really depends, right? Like, if it, if it was me, if it was my game, if I was balancing 10th edition, I would be looking at all the units that don't perform and like looking at them probably harder than the units that do perform just because i'd be going like you know we make suppressors we should we should be selling suppressors to people no one thinks they're worthwhile so these guys maybe need a 10 percent buff or something right like that's how i would be approaching it um same with reavers But obviously it's not me, I'm not approaching it at all, you know, I'm just I'm just telling you how I if it was me, that's how I would be approaching it. Uh, most things with heavy though their ballistic skill is one higher than normal. Is it? Have we seen that? I'm trying to think what we've seen that's got heavy and has got one worse ballistic skill. I 
I mean, I don't know if if, if did we. I don't think we've seen a marine preview that showed that. The only marine preview we saw was like land raiders that have heavy, and then or the one weapon that they showed was um, the bolt rifle, and it certainly didn't have that. It still hit on threes. It just had like heavy built in, right? Beside combat support trolls, can you even buy suppressors? They're in. Um, well, what the hell are they in? They're in that. Um, they're in one of the boxes, like a Vanguard Space Marine box or something like that. Uh, do you think plasma is out for tenth? I don't. I don't know about plasma war thunder. I don't like plasma. Like I just don't typically run plasma myself anyway. I don't like the fact that it could potentially kill my own models. Maybe I'm too scared of plasma, but I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of plasma anyway. The only plasma I run. Um. The only plasma I've run all the way through tenth is I ran Redemptor Dreadnoughts, and they typically do better with the plasma cannons and the gauntlet than the than the Gatling cannons. So I ran those. And at the end, when they made Stern Guard basically get all their combi weapons for free, I ran, um, I ran a bunch of Stern Guard with combi plasmas because they were like super cheap, and I didn't really care if they died at 20 points per model. But normally, I don't really go for plasma. I don't love it. Um, it's going to be the only. So I think. High power plasma is going to be crazy risky. I think inceptors are going to be crazy risky. Inceptors might finally get a points drops though, because they're crazy risky. Because you're going to have to roll two hazard dice for every inceptor. The macro, the most interesting thing for me is the macro plasma, like that the Redemptor Dreadnought gets, and we'll, I guess we'll see. Like it's already a pretty high toughness weapon or strength weapon. Sorry, it's already strength nine in the current edition. So if you think a last cannon is strength nine at the moment, and it's gone to twelve. Potentially, I guess you could be saying like the macro plasma is strength twelve. Um, if they normalize the shot, so it's like D3 plus 3 or something, or D6 plus 1, or D6 plus 3 or something, if they normalize the shots on that Redemptor Dreadnoughts, they could be really good. Uh, Bolter Inceptors could be good. Bolter Inceptors were okay for a little while. Uh, at the very start of 9th edition, I, I took Bolter Inceptors a couple of tournaments. They were okay. Um, They were better when they used to be able to like perform objectives such as like Nak Monday and stuff and you could guarantee it. You didn't need um you know, and behind uh, what was it, engaging all fronts before they increased like the size of the squad you needed for that sort of stuff. Like I liked bolter inceptors back then, but I didn't I haven't, haven't run them in a good couple of years at this point. I hope Bolter Inceptors are good, says uh, <laughs> Marius. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's too hard to tell certain things, right? Just because, like, I think the thing that makes it too hard to tell potentially at the moment is like, um, what's going to be dealing with armor, right? Like, we need to see more rules, like. Like, like, how many points in our army do we need to include to take out armor? Like, what are pe how much armor are people taking? And what do we need to deal with it, right? Because, like, I think that's the big unknown. And, and that's even more so an unknown for Blood Angels, because before, when we had the Red Thirst rule, we, I don't want to say we didn't have to worry about it, but we didn't have to worry about it quite so much, because even if we're fighting armor, we're like, well, if we're fighting armor, we still got plus one to wound, we run a lot of like thunder hammer or power fists and then we can just wound armor anyway on like threes or even twos if we're lucky we don't need to de take dedicated anti-armor weaponry whereas now there may be there may be a really 
there may be a really serious need to have like terminators with chain fists like you might just 100% need terminators with chain fists otherwise you come into an, an enemy and you just get unstuck because there's certain pieces of armor you just can't drop um thunder hammers might get around it i suppose based on what people what benno said earlier was like thunder hammers because they have devastating wounds because they can convert a bunch of their damage to mortals they still have a pretty good uptick into armor uh, if the plasma scepter is twin linked, is that one dice or two? It would be one, but I don't know if they're going to twin link the plasma scepter's pistols. I think what they'll do with the plasma scepters is they'll make them like forty points a model. But if you want to shoot them on high, like if you like, so they'll put them back down because they were forty at one point or forty-five. They'll put them down to like forty-five. But every time you shoot them, you're just going to have to roll two dice, and on on a single one, you're dead. Um, which is going to make them. It's going to make them very risky, and and you you can't like use a captain to get re rolls on them now. So that makes them like way way more risky. So in some cases, like plasma on a redemptor is less risky. Plasma on an scepter is more risky. So if if I was already on board of like I don't really run plasma out with the redemptor, I'm definitely not going to run it now. You can CP reroll a hazard dice. Yes, you can, but you can CP. That's one hazard dice. Whereas before, I guess if you were near like Dante, you're rerolling all your ones, right? You're only rerolling one hazard dice now. And um, CP rerolls are absolutely the worst value way of using your CP in the game. Uh, if you don't believe me, think how many times have you rerolled? A C how many times have you spent the CP for a reroll and you reroll into the same fucking number or the same uh you know like it's a it's a par you you pearls on your recycler and then you CP reroll it and you pearls again like th that happens all the time um whereas like CP now we know CP on like a dreadnought can be used for like almost guaranteed six mortal wounds so what's the what's the value here? Like a CP reroll on a hazard test or a CP to get six mortal wounds, right? For me it's like I would just remove the hazard test situation. like I just would take a gun that doesn't make me waste my CP on fucking hazard tests so I can use my CP to do six mortal wounds every time I charge with a vehicle, right? Uh I wish dreads could move fast I mean the librarian dreadnought can fly. I mean Here's the. I was gonna say maybe he can't fly anymore. Good question. Good point. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Um. I, I, what I do know, I thought, suppose, is you can put 500 points of units into reserve every game now, Phil. So could you just put a couple of dreadnoughts into reserve every game? And just risk the nine-inch charge. It's more flexible about how they come on the board now. Like it's easier to get them in. There's less board edge restrictions and shit like that. Uh, quad heavy bolt or rapier is going to be fun as hell. Who You're talking about rapier platforms. You think people are actually going to run them? Um, my daughter just woke up. Give me one second. I'll be right back. Hey, honey. Hey, honey. Hey, sorry. Um, is there any going to... I missed a few questions. You can get re-rolls from whatever, even Oath of Moment target, right? 
So a hazard dice roll is completely separate from a hit roll. And you're not going to be able to re-roll, you know, you're not going to get an aura that lets you re-roll your hazard dice from my understanding. Um. I think they're more. I think hazard. I think inceptors are more risky in tenth because if you if you if you had six inceptors or sorry three inceptors in ninth. Let's just assume you had maximum shots, so you'd eighteen shots. So you roll eighteen dice, and then. You're near, you're near your captain or your commander or whatever, so you roll 18 dice, then you re-roll all the ones and that's you. Whereas now, you roll your shots and it doesn't matter if you get ones to hit or anything in your shots, that's completely separate. After you've done all your shots, you then roll 6 dice, because it's 6 plasma guns you had, one in each hand for the 3 guys, and for every one it's a dead guy, and there's no way to re-roll those without command point re-rolls, like there's no aura that lets you re-roll any of those. Um, so I think statistically that's like way way worse because you could you could like you could easily have a roll where you just suddenly spike three three ones. There's no way to re-roll that, so the whole squad's just dead. Whereas before you could roll six ones, but then you're like, well, I can re-roll ones because I'm next to my commander, so I can re-roll all six and maybe I get lucky and get none, right? So I think maybe statistically they're not as bad, but I think like when you when when I think of it that way, I think like well that's way more likely for me to lose the whole squad than like 18 dice with reroll ones doesn't sound that bad. Like what I roll two or three ones maybe, and then I reroll the two or three ones into another number that doesn't sound bad at all. Whereas just like six dice and every every one is a dead model sounds as bad as, you know, when your rhino explodes and you have to roll six dice and everyone's a dead guy or something like you, Those rolls are kind of scary to roll, right? And that's, I guess that's what plasma is now. Um, sorry, left-handed Texan. Is there going to be any way to get the core rules in book form? They have said that they're going to do like a small rule book. Uh, left-handed Texan that's like... I guess separate from the big rule book you're gonna get with the, like if you bought the 10th edition box set. What they also said is that apparently both books are basically gonna be carbon copies of each other so that the page numbers match from book to book, which I think is a good improvement. So if the main rule book says page 25 for, I don't know, charge rules or some shit, the little book should also say the exact same page number for the charge rules. So, um, I mean, the big the big rule book isn't really the rule book you want, like as a tournament player, because it's like three hundred and ninety something pages. So as a tournament player, you don't want to ever have to take a three hundred and ninety page book with you wherever you go to play a game, right? Like, um, I got enough shit I have to carry around. Um, so, so I think they're gonna sell that book. They haven't said exactly how they're gonna sell it. Maybe a bit like chapter approved, I'm not entirely sure. But they also haven't announced like the first season of chapter approved for 10th or anything. I guess maybe they're going to let the dust settle a little bit. Um, personally, I do not think plasma scepters will suck, but I don't think they suck now. Um, one hazard dice per overcharge model. No, it's one hazard dice per overcharge weapon. So if you've got plasma scepters and you've got two die, two, if you overcharge both guns, I actually don't know if you can just overcharge one and undercharge the other. I don't know if, I don't think anyone's ever done that. 
But if you have two, if you have two guns like the plasma scepters, you overcharge both. Then you have to roll hazard dice for two models. Hey, Kawi. I don't know if I say that right. How are you? Good evening. Now we'll have battle shock tokens to to to, to lug about. As far as somebody will make a battle shock token on e on an eBay shop, like a three D printed battle shock token, and they will sell a hundred thousand of them. You watch, and whoever makes that battle shock token first, and it's really cool, will make a killing on eBay. You watch. Uh, I think Inceptor's guns will will become one. Well, I mean, I guess they might on the profile. That that would be the if they did that, that would probably help balance them and they would maybe alleviate some of the concerns that I have around Inceptor's uh, serenade. But the way that Inceptor's currently are, if they are counted as two guns, then I think that makes overcharging them like crazy risky. Um, but I mean, you know. If you like plasma and you think it's good still, then go for it. I'm not the. I'm not the. Um, like, I don't know. I don't. I just have my opinion. You're more than welcome to ignore my opinion. I just think it's way more spiky, right? You know, like when a transport explodes, like sometimes when a transport explodes, nothing inside the transport dies. And then other times when the transport explodes, loads of shit inside dies. Um, and that's kind of what I think the new hazard tests, that's kind of how they make me feel. Alunda, is there a tournament in the Arts of Omen book? In tournament, is there an Arts of Omen book needed? Um, I think you're asking like for tournament play. Do you need the Arcs of Omen book? Oh, you're 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 talking about like the big thick Arcs of Omen books. Thank you so much for the two bucks. You don't need any of them for tournament play. You need you need for tournament play. You need the chapter approved book. Um, they haven't announced the new season of chapter approved. Um, but they were announced. They were doing seasons basically every six months. So I imagine at some point, potentially like as soon as they release the 10th edition box, they might announce season one chapter approved. When do other people think chapter approved is going to come? I wouldn't just be surprised if Art of War would have 10th edition tokens pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, you'll probably get branded. People will brand their 10th edition tokens for sure. I wish I knew how to do that. And I could get Blood Angels Commander branded rally broken tokens. That would be cool. I don't really have any... Like, I don't have a 3D printer or anything like that, unfortunately. Uh, will Drop Pods fit Primaris Death Company? I think they probably will. I think Drop Pods will be able to take... Yeah, I think Drop Pods will probably be able to take Primaris Death Company if you want to do that. Uh, I think they'll probably take Blade Guard. I think they'll take any Primaris, just not Gravis. Um... Yeah, just not Gravis, not Terminators. Well, we already, they couldn't take Terminators before, but Terminators can deep strike anyway, so I don't know why you would need them in a drop pod, but yeah.
Well, the graphics of Potter could he be any good. I don't know. We haven't seen enough of his, of his rules. Um, I mean, that's the frustrating thing right now is like there's probably a lot of videos I could have been making about 10th edition, but we just don't have enough data. Like, without the Blood Angels getting a chat like a preview page like the other chapters and stuff we're getting then we just we I feel like we just don't have enough information to say yes or no in some of those things um it sound like the Gravis apothecary will join Gravis units so like we do know blood angels will probably like aggressors are probably going to be looking a bit better um, we know some people like Eradicators, Eradicators probably will still have a bit of a place. Uh, so I mean it will be cool to have a Apothecary that can join Gravis units, whether or not he's highly competitive, like we'll just have to wait and see on that one I'm afraid. Death Company Edge highlighting takes so bloody long, doesn't it? This is why I've been putting these guys off for ages. How do you get the red X on the jump pack so straight? These ones are actually modelled with. Um, these ones actually have like, like a built-in def defined line, man. So I just had to paint up to the lines. So like, <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't do anything special. I didn't, I didn't do anything cool. I just painted up to the line, uh, and then took my time and went back and kind of. That's why I'm so slow. I always end up going back and trying to make things look better. Painting isn't a race, right? But yeah, the if you've never seen this these sort of jump packs before, these are the like these come with the Death Company. You just buy the you just buy death you just buy a box of Death Company and they will come with these custom jump packs. Uh, you get a few different variants. One obviously has these red X's on it. One has X's on the top, like this guy. Um, again, you can you can maybe see it a bit easier in there how there's like a defined line. So you're just you're just filling in. You're just it's like was that thing you used to do when you were a kid, painting by numbers or something? You're just you're just filling in the color. Uh, uh, I've got a Blood Angels Combat Patrol, a Raven Guard Battle Box, and a Strike Force Augustus and a pile of shame. What should I prioritize? I would prioritize the Brutalis Dreadnought in the um, Augustus box that's like super high on my priority list like I think he's going to be really good I think he's going to be a, I think he's going to be a monster in, in 10th edition uh, if I didn't have so much stuff I just kind of had half done and just really wanted to finish before we go into the new edition I feel like I would have started on my Brutalis already I played the Brutalis the other day, uh, Blood Angels versus Flesh Terrors, and the Brutalis, like, he's got four multi-melter shots. He's pretty darn useful. 
He's not just a melee dreadnought. Uh, does the Games Workshop still make the Augustus box? Do you know what? I did look on their website for the Augustus box and like, it's not there. So if you want the Augustus box, which I guess at the moment is probably the only way to get Desolation Marines and the Brutalis, I guess you're like... Um, I guess you're going to like, you're gonna have to look for a third party retailer or you're gonna have to go to eBay, which is... Which I guess sucks. The Gustus box came, like, it seems like it, like I expected it earlier in the edition. Amazon has them for $175, I don't know what they cost new. Over here I think it was, I think it was just £100, so. Well look, you, if you bought the Gustus box, John, and you have it now, then you're one of the lucky few. These other people are going to have to spend 175 to get it on eBay, and look, hey, you've got it because I said buy it, right? Um... If there's no other way to get the Brutalis Dreadnought, the, Br the Brutalis is good, man. Um, I run my Redemptor Dreadnought as a proxy for the Brutalis, and after it, I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to run some more Brutalis. The fear of missing out stuff though, like it is I feel like it's a little bit annoying that like you know, you, you never quite know whether you need to buy it or not, and then in this case, like I assume they're gonna do a made to order, right? For the tenth edition, so people don't miss out in the tenth edition box set. So if they do that made to order on tenth edition, so people don't miss out. Then they're gonna have a giant backlog of orders of 10th edition. So it really makes me wonder like when will we see the kits for the Desolation Marines or the Brutalis? Like like realistically, you might not see those kits for, for like six months. So maybe buying Augustus would actually have been a great idea, right? Um Marius got a Brutalis. Cool. Uh I think the like, the Desolation Marines are pretty high on my list to do as well. Uh, I'd like to see the three Redemptor Dreads available separately before too long. Yeah, I mean, that's why I, I originally was going to buy the 10th edition box and, like, keep the Turnids for myself, but then somebody said, someone that I know really wanted the Turnids, and I was like, do you know what, I kind of... I kind of think that getting two boxes of the Marines might be useful just for the Dreadnoughts mainly. Like, so like, in terms of 10th edition, the thing that I kind of want to just make straight away is the Ballistus Dreads. I'm really, at this point I think someone at Games Workshop is fucking with us. Like, they've named so many units beginning with I. Like, Inceptors, Intercessors, Infiltrators, Incursors. Uh, there's more. There's more that begin with I. Inceptors, Intercessors, Incursors, Infiltrators. Come on, tell me there's more that begin with I. I know there is. There's at least one more Marine unit that begins with I. Um, uh, and now with the Dreadnoughts, it's like they did the Brutalis and the Ballistus. It's just like, just stop giving them some fucking similar names. You're just fucking with me at this point. I can't even remember, like... I don't even remember my kids' birthdays. I don't need to try and differentiate between like two names that are so similar. I feel like there was like Indefactors. <laughs> I'm sure there was one other that begin with I. I'm sure of it. Uh, 
Uh, Grey Knights of uh, Interceptors, yeah. Was it only four that begin with I? Oh, I never feel like an idiot. Maybe I'm complaining about nothing, but I thought it was like five that, that had to, to begin with I. That was it, Infernus. There we go. So there is there is five troop units that begin with I. Infernus, Infiltrators, Incursors, Intercessors, Inceptors. There you go. Everyone forgot about Infernus because they, um... Because I guess nobody needs a squad that's just ten guys with flamers. But anyway, they've done it. Yeah, Todd, there we go. Thanks, Todd. Um... Yeah, so we've got five Space Marine <laughs> that begin with I. Why? <laughs> yeah, they're definitely messing with us. There's the Impulsor as well. Good shout, Fawz Impulsor. Uh, heard today that retailer orders for Leviathan Box are this week. Really? I would be surprised if they're this week. But, I mean, they might be. Well, if they're this week, they'll be announcing them early in the week, I imagine. For when? Actually, don't they announce next week's pre-orders on a on a on a Sunday? So would that be tomorrow? All right, I have like ten more minutes of painting in me, guys. So if you've got any any more hot questions about 10th edition, hit me up. Otherwise, um, I was going to say, I think it might be the last army list show of 9th edition tomorrow. We'll see. I think at this, at this point in time, I think there's one person submitted a list for tomorrow night. And I guess this is the problem with the army list show on Sunday nights at the moment is like... I know when 10th edition, when 10th edition hits, I'll get like 50 submissions and I'll be miles behind and I'll be, I'll probably genuinely feel bad because people put their submissions in and it'll be like, I won't be able to get to them. I might, when, I was going to say, when 10th, yeah, when 10th edition releases and a shed load of submission comes in again, I'm going to have to probably prior to prioritize member, like channel member submissions or channel member or channel patrons for a while. Um, just so that I can get to them in like a timely manner. But right now, at the end of 9th edition, I've never had this channel, like I only started this channel in 9th edition, so I never had a channel at the at the end of the edition, but it does seem like at the moment, like no one is submitting army lists for the, for the review show. So like at the moment, I think I've got one list to look at tomorrow night, which at that point, eh, uh, Two army list nights. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you say that, Falls, but you're gonna remember our fox. I got family and stuff. I can't. Um, I mean, like, I already ditched my family. I don't ditch my family, but I already spend a lot of time doing Warhammer stuff. Uh, could I mean you can submit an Ultramarines list the problem is I'm not going to be um, Invictors what's an Invictor oh the Invictor Tactical Warsuit yeah so we've got seven we've got seven Space Marine units that begin with I yeah I mean <laughs> why so many that begins with I Yeah, I mean, I, I'm thinking when the new, um, I'm thinking when the new indexes come out. I think like Marines in general, are, there's going to be more crossover between Marine factions than there ever has been. But um, so maybe like we've done successor lists before. I just don't know if I'm I'm qualified to do other chapters. Maybe, but not at the start of. At the start of um, 10th edition, we'll... it should just be Blood Angels that we'll be trying to do. Invader ATVs, there you go, there's eight units now. This is becoming a, this is becoming a meme. I'm not the only, I'm not an idiot. I told you there was too many that begin with I. 
I told you there was loads. A three gots armyless show for any faction in tenth could be good for some laughs and learning. It could be. I mean, if we're struggling for content one week, we could definitely do submissions for any faction because if the rules are all digital, then we should be able to break it down. There is seven, yes, yeah, seven units that begin with I. It's madness. That's why I don't remember shit. Too many eyes. It's all good. I, I was, I was, I just remembered at one point when I read the new Inferno. So I was like, "Oh my god, another eye! Why have we get so many that begin with I?" Got a little bit of edge highlighting on this guy's thumb, maybe. That's when you know you've gone too far. These are only supposed to be battle ready models, right? That's where I that's what I go for a battle ready. Is it a British thing? All Aston Martins started with a V for a while. Uh, is that not just the size of the engine or something, no? I don't know, I'm not really a car person. I use a car to go from A to B and that's about it. I don't know much else about cars. Alright, I think I'm taking off for the night guys, thanks so much for hanging out tonight, I hope you enjoyed the stream, please hit the like button though, before you leave if you have enjoyed tonight's stream, um, always do appreciate everybody that hits that like button. Uh, there probably will be an army list show tomorrow, if someone, has, someone is sitting on a 9th edition list that they want reviewed, then send me it. I mean if you really want to send me an Ultramarines list, we could look at an Ultramarines list tomorrow night. I'm not sure I'm going to be looking at Ultramarines lists ever again, or, um, I mean, maybe if the Codex or the Index comes out and I get it and I know exactly what Ultramarines do, then maybe we could look at them again. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't think there's many lists for tomorrow night, If I think there's one. And I think that's probably how it's going to go until the new edition releases. So I think maybe after tomorrow night, considering there's like two weeks left, probably not going to do army lists. We'll kick the show off with a bang as soon as the codex has come out in the new... I was going to say the new year? No. New season? Alright, I'm just going to do a tiny little bit more on this guy's armour and then that's me going to bed.
switch it to a painting stream? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be doing something, right? So, um, I suppose if we just have like one army list to look at, we can do the army list and then just go straight into painting. Because I'll be here, I'll be doing something, yeah. So there'll be, um, do you know what, if there is only one army list, that's fine. We'll do paint. I need to, I need to finish these guys anyway. So, uh, yeah, I'll feel very pleased when these, I'm done with their all edge highlighting BS. Slowly, slowly getting there, like super slowly. Uh, yeah, see a few people are doing like their last ever game of ninth. I've heard a few people talking about that. Gav said he might want a final game of ninth on the channel. I said to him like, let me know when you're free and we'll do it. So, um, there could be a few uh, final game, like final things here and there, I guess. Alright, good night Jim. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I'm off in just one minute. I'm gonna just put this tiny light a little bit. So that's like a Well I think yeah, we must be like less than a month probably from tenth at this point, right? Or just over a month. So yeah, uh, a couple of people might have like final 9th edition tournaments to go to, so yeah, I mean, I'll definitely, if people submit lists, I'll still review them, but I don't think, I guess the army list show is going to be a bit lower key till 10th um, till comes. The 10th will be here before we know it. 100%. Good night, Frank. Good night, Alinda. Uh, good luck against your game against Death Guard. All right. Um, hoping to go to double stream at draw wrap up ninth. Well, best of luck. Best of luck. Uh, Thanks for everyone hanging out tonight. Uh, we'll see you guys at some point sooner rather than later, I'm sure. We'll talk the final. We'll put 9th edition of 40k to bed, I guess. Uh, it's, it's been a good edition. It has been a good edition. Uh, it's, a few people have said it's the best balanced edition we've had. Yeah, I think I agree. Uh, let's, let's here's to 10th being even more balanced slash the best edition we've ever had. Let's hope, eh? Good night, John. Uh, take care, Foz. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'll catch you guys. I'll be here tomorrow. Uh, I might have a list to look at or so, but we might just be finishing these damn death company guys off. Uh, enjoy your evening, and we'll see you then. Good night. Peace.